Welcome to A Day of Prayer. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. Together, let's engage in relationship with Christ through prayer, faith, and His Word. Good morning, good welcome. You're listening to Day of Prayer's Morning Bible Study, and we're so glad you can join us. But before we get into the word, let's pray. Lord, we just thank you, Lord, for all the good things that you're doing in our life, Lord. And Lord, we also just thank you for being a good God to us all the time, Lord, and giving us wisdom and knowledge so that way we can apply it, Lord. And Lord, we also just thank you for the opportunity to see your hand at work, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. In amen. Jesus' mighty name, amen. And amen. Well, good morning and welcome, everybody. We are glad to have you with us as we continue our study in the book of Acts. And I'd like to just thank you right off the bat for liking these episodes, for subscribing on, on this and any of the platforms where you find a day of prayer, and for sharing the episodes with someone else mm-hmm. so they, too, can learn and grow in relationship with our Lord and Savior. And we, I want to thank you especially, or we want to thank you, mm-hmm. for sharing in the work of the ministry and the mandate the Lord's given us that we build this house and that the gospel is spread throughout the four corners of the earth. Mm-hmm. So thank you for for participating and partnering with us in that and doing your your part, fulfilling your role in this. So we, we are definitely thankful to the Lord for you and thank you for your obedience to him. So... That being said, let's get into the Word, shall we? Yes. And this morning we are going to reread in Acts chapter 5, verses 17 through 26. So can I get a volunteer to cover that section of Scripture, please? I will. All right, promise. Then the high priest rose up, and all those who were with them, which is the sect of the Sadducees, and they were filled with indignation and laid their hands on the apostles and put them in the common prison. But at night an angel of the Lord opened the prison doors and brought them out and said, Go stand in the temple and speak to the people all the words of this life. And when they heard that, they entered the temple early in the morning and talked. But the high priest and those who were with them came and called the council together with all the elders of the children of Israel and brought to the pri- and sent to the prison to have them brought. But when the officers came and did not find them in the prison, they returned and reported, saying, Indeed, we found the prison shut securely and the guards standing outside before the doors. But when we opened one second, opened them, we found no one inside. Now when the high priest, the captain of the temple, and the chief priest heard these things, they wondered what the outcome would be. So one came and told them, saying, Look. The men whom you put in prison are standing in the temple and teaching the people. Then the captain went with the officers and brought them without violence, for they feared the people, lest they should be stoned. Mm-hmm. All thank right, you, well, sweetheart. Thank you, sir. And at this time, we're going to open the floor and give each of you the opportunity to share what the Holy Spirit speaking and ministering to you, and of course, to ask any questions that you might have. So, who would like to begin? I will. Okay. All right, I promise. Okay, first the Lord (coughs) brought me to 1 John 4, 18, where it says, There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear, because fear involves torment. But he who fears has not been made perfect in love. And then verse 19, where it says, We love him because he first loved us. Mm-hmm. And so, the Lord was showing me that what the apostles, they didn't go, oh man, I'm not going to go preach in the morning or leave when they hear that the priests are, not priests, Pharisees and Sadducees are coming and going, oh man, we're going to get caught. But they stayed there and did what the Lord told them to do. And so, it reminded me of the Lord, sorry, the Lord was talking to me about was first he had asked me a couple of questions and one of them was whose righteousness I was. Wait, first he asked me if I was righteous and I said yes and he said, 
by whose standard? And so the Lord showed me that if you're going going by this is what everybody else is doing, what men are saying good, then you're not going the right way. And then there's another scripture inside of First John where it says, Verse 10 where it says, In this the children of God and the children of devil are manifest. Whoever does not practice righteousness is not of God, nor is he who does not love his brother. Hmm. Then verse 7 where it says, Little children, let no, no one deceive you. He who practices righteousness is righteous just as he is righteous. And so the Lord is talking, talking to me about how whenever what you when you do what the Lord's telling you to do, then what, then you become the righteousness of God. And He was showing me that if you're afraid to say something that the Lord's told you to say, then it's not right to be afraid. You have to go ahead and say it. Why is that? Because perfect love casts out fear, and if you fearing. Then love's not in you. Okay. It hasn't been perfected yet. Mm -hmm. um, so if you belong to God, right, when you get saved, uh, Romans tells us that the love of God is shed abroad in our heart when we accept Jesus as our Lord and Savior. Holy Spirit does that for us. So we have it. We just have to cultivate it. Mm -hmm. And there are times where our natural flesh could have some misgivings about a situation. But we are told also in Romans to renew our mind. So that way we're, we're transformed and we're no longer the fleshly, earthly person who is subject to terror and fear and um, the connection to the natural senses that would drive us away from the things of God. But to now become um, like Christ in the way that we perceive and behave, perceive things around us and behave and engage in what God has called us to do. So there is, God is not condemning those who have fear, you know, coming from their flesh, he's saying, let the love of God be bigger and greater on the inside of you. Spend your time cultivating this so that way when it's time to live and move and have your being, you're coming from a place of being founded on the love of God versus connected to your natural senses where it drives and controls your choices and your actions. Then the Lord was showing me, showing me that he had asked me, when he had asked me if I was righteous, he also asked that but whose righteousness I was. Mm -hmm. And so the Lord showed me that when whatever you do is, whatever you do is demonstrating whatever, what choice you've made. Mm -hmm. So if you're not listening to the Lord, then that means that you can't be up. You're moving away from the Lord. Okay. But if you're doing what man says, then you're the righteousness of men. And I think it's inside of Isaiah where it says, the righteousness of man is but filthy rags. Yes, that all of man's righteousness is but filthy rags. Mm-hmm. Okay. And so the Lord is reminding me, if you're always looking to see, please men, then you can't be at the same time trying to please God. Mm -hmm. Because there's two different standards. If one's higher than the other and you're trying to shoot for the lower one, then you can't get the higher one. And so the Lord's told me that if you're afraid to say something because you're going to lose something, don't look at what you're going to lose but what you're going to gain. Mm -hmm. Amen. Because... Go ahead. If you're saying what the Lord says, then there's always fruit. Mm -hmm. And he said that if you're always focusing on what you're losing, then you'll never be able to accept what the Lord's giving you. It'll just bounce off your back because you're facing the other way. <laughs> okay. Jesus said that if we seek to save our own life, right, we'll, we would end up losing it. But if we lost it for his sake, then we would gain it. So um, 
And he also said that we cannot serve two masters Mm -hmm. in this particular section of the gospel. He was talking about um, God and and money or mammon, but mammon also represents the world system. It represents um, being man pleasers or people pleasers, having preeminence uh, before mankind and things of that nature. So, and we're just lovers of self, pleasers of self, right? Amen. That, yes. that goes along with that as well. Um, but he also tells us to seek first the kingdom and his righteousness. Yes? Yes. And then he says yes. all these things will be added. Why? Because all those things are contained within him. He created those things mm-hmm. long before we even knew we had need of it. He had already created all the gold and all the silver and all the precious stones and everything else that we could even, before we even could imagine it or knew we had need of it, mm-hmm. knew that that it was valuable. Mm-hmm. He had already created it and given it to us. Given it freely. Amen. Did you have anything else, Promise? <coughs> Uh, I don't think so. Okay. I just want to make sure you have this down on the inside of your heart. Mm -hmm. The moment you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, like that instance, you become the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. You don't work your way up to it, and you cannot earn it. It is something that is freely bestowed upon you that you enter in to by the grace of God through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ as God and being your Lord in particular. So at that moment, you have it. And even when you fall short of doing the things that God wants you to do, he is always faithful and just to forgive you for your sins and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. Right? Yes. Excuse me. And he is greater than your conscience and he's able to remove the, the stain or the remembrance of the things that you've done wrong. But that, that only comes from relationship with him and understanding right? That it's his blood and his grace that brings and bestows that righteousness upon you. The Pharisees were trying to earn it through works. Mm -hmm. And that's what made it a problem. Even Abraham, he believed God and it was accounted to him, uh, counted unto him for righteousness, right? Who was prior to Christ, but also outside of the, the natural, I mean, the Mosaic law, but God always wanted us to come to him by faith. That's not, that's never changed. And because we believe him, we obey. But it's not the obedience that gives us the right standing with God. It's the blood of Jesus. The obedience is our loving response to him because we understand who he is and who we are in him. Okay? Yes. Dean, do you have something? I'm just going to piggyback on that for a quick little visual to help people understand. It's the moment you Mm -hmm. accept Christ. Amen. So. We are but filthy rags, bloody, filthy rags, right? Mm-hmm. Our, our sin brings the shedding of blood, right? So we're covered in blood, as it were, um, prior to coming to Christ, right? Mm-hmm. Um, we begin becoming like Christ from that point, which is an ongoing process in that. But God now sees us through the lens of Christ who shed blood for us. So we're seen through Christ's blood. So if you take a red light bulb and you use a pair of red sunglasses, the bulb appears to be white. Hmm. When God looks at us through Christ's blood, Mm -hmm. he sees us as white. It doesn't change our working out our sanctification, but it changes the way God views us immediately Mm -hmm. because now we are seen through Christ and we become white in that regard. It's a really just good picture for people to think about. There's a lot of doctrine and stuff we can get into in that, but I just thought that might help somebody Amen. to think of it that way. And Amen. if you don't believe me, try You can find a YouTube videos on it, but if you look at a red light through a red lens, it no longer looks red anymore. Amen. Amen. So there, we are a spirit. We have a soul, and we live in a body. The spirit is a new creation the moment we accept Jesus Christ. The soul is, has to be renewed to look like and be trans that that's what we walk in the renewing of day by day so that we become conformed to the image of God, the image of the son, the Lord Jesus Christ. So God is faithful. And I do appreciate that Dean. 
Mm-hmm. God always wanted to show us mercy. And the blood of Jesus is the vein and the avenue that he is able to provide that to us. Right. Looking at the righteousness of his son applied to our lives freely. And all we have to do is partake of it. Um, did anybody else have anything they wanted to say? Yeah, go ahead, sweetheart. It was some, it, I just remembered it. Okay. Um, so Lord also was telling me what the question of whose righteousness I was. He told me to start acting like it. Please do. Good morning. <laughs> I'll welcome you to the party. Yes. Speaking as your mother. Yes. Of, of course, I want you to start acting like you are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Start acting like Jesus died for you. Start acting like you know who you are in him. And not just with righteous behaviors, but I mean, even taking the authority that belongs to you Amen. in the name of Jesus Christ. Mm-hmm. Laying your hands on the sick, you preaching the gospel. You casting out devils in the name of Jesus. I'm good morning. Come on with it. And so the Lord gave me an example of if there's a flock of sheep, sheep are supposed to eat grass. But if you see a sheep eating another sheep, you're going to ask, is that really a sheep or is that a wolf? (laughs) Yeah. Okay. And so the Lord's telling me that if you're not exhibiting behavior, nobody's going to know the righteous. Nobody would know the righteousness of God. The people around you who are mm-hmm. looking at you. Okay. And so that's the our purpose. We're supposed to go inside the world and preach the gospel. Mm-hmm. And show unbelievers how, how it's done and how to get to heaven. Amen. And we're supposed to encourage believers as well. One of your favorite scriptures, Layla, is that we are living epistles read by all men, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. We are also the fragrance of God in the earth. Of God, for those that are coming to life, we smell like life. For those who are perishing, we smell like death. But we are supposed to let his fragrance diffuse through us. Truly, right? Yes. Yes. So that his name is glorified and his purpose is fulfilled. Mm -hmm. Um, Now, verse 20 stood out to me. Um, Yes. Go stand in the temple. Uh, This is back in Acts chapter 5, verse 20. Go stand in the temple and speak to the people all the words of this life. I thought that was very, very interesting and unique um, because there's many lives that they could be trying to live. And... um, Christ is the fulfillment of the law and he's also the freedom that we're looking for. Uh, Hebrews chapter four um, and the, the particular section of scripture in this chapter, they're talking about entering into God's rest. Um, and it's a comparison for the Jews looking at what it was like um, under the law versus the grace that's appropriated and apportioned to us now, but even making the connection that our God is still the same God. He was trying to give them rest, but they wouldn't believe the gospel that was preached to them. Uh, But in verse eight of Hebrews chapter four, it says, for if Joshua had given them rest, then he would not afterward have spoken of another day. And verse nine says, there remains therefore a rest for the people of God. Mm -hmm. For he who has entered his rest has himself also ceased from his works as God did from his. So talking about making that transition from being under a, a works based law that because of the nature of bringing the sacrifices as according to the law and, and trying to keep it automatically either brings a focus on, um, works or a casting off of restraint and an I don't care. Mm -hmm. I don't even want to be a part of this anymore. So the people who were so hungry and they kept bringing their offerings and their sacrifices day after day, but it still wasn't enough for them. They kept trying to keep the law, but it still didn't satisfy that, that place in them that God has put in all of his, his human creation to look for him and to search for him and to cry out for him and to want something more in a deeper relationship, they still weren't satisfied. So as the Lord has, you know, begun the, the ministry of the, the church, the body of Christ mm-hmm. in the earth still saying, Hey, 
I know you're not satisfied by this. And God knows that because he put that inside of us. He, and he has his timeline that he is working and he's like, this is what's happening. This is what's coming forth in the people of God. And I've brought this, um, I've awakened this in them, if you will, to look for him, to cry out. And they may not even have known that they were hungry and thirsty, but when they heard the word of the Lord fall upon their ears and then begin to get into their heart, they're like, this is what I need. I need, I need something more than this because just bringing offerings day after day doesn't bring me to relationship with God. Just standing here in this place and having the, you know, the Sadducees come sit at my feast or all of that stuff, it doesn't make me feel um, satisfied. They were still dealing with all the the oppression and torment and I'll say demonic you know, right and ailments and everything else that that they were that they'd had, right? You cannot purchase a miracle. You cannot purchase the Holy Spirit. Amen. Right? <clears throat> and if we look at this section of scripture, that's exactly <clears throat> what the issue with the Pharisees was. It began with seeing the signs and wonders that they saw through Christ Mm -hmm. and and during Jesus's earthly ministry. They're seeing the same thing. So as you were talking about entering into his rest, it's not just entering into his rest because when you get to the core of that, we have to go back to the Gospels. But in Matthew, um, Mark, and Luke, um, I'll give it to you. It's Matthew 21. It's in Mark 11. And it's in Luke 20. They're questioning Jesus' authority, right? Um, I'll I'll read from Mark 11. It actually begins at verse 27. It goes down to 33. But Jesus asked them, uh, So sorry, excuse me. The Pharisees asked Jesus a question. By whose authority are you doing these things, right? And if we go to Acts 5, that was the exact part right peter's shadow was falling over on people and they were being healed and set free from demonic oppression and possession and everything else right and there's there was a lot that was happening but it's still the pharisees are faced with the same question the same issue by whose authority are you doing these things entering into his rest is also entering into his authority these apostles received they entered into his rest, if you will, in the sense of they received the authority that he had given them. They received that through the Holy Spirit. It was a matter of obedience, which that's how you enter into his rest. It's obedience to the Lord. He says in Scripture, I desire obedience and not sacrifice. So they, were, they had decided that's what they were going to do. But the Pharisees were still stuck. They didn't receive his authority then, and they even question it. And it's the same mindset and mentality at the end, right? They feared, in verse 26, it says that they feared the people that they should be stoned. The, the guards, the, the, the troops, the soldiers, feared the, that the people would stone them. And it's the same thing you, you come across here when, they, when Jesus asked them the question, he said, by whose authority do I do these things? Or did John the Baptist do these things? By his own authority or from heaven? And the Pharisees refused to answer because of how the people viewed. And were, uh, in Luke, it talks about the people were convinced that John was a prophet, Right? So, by heavenly authority. And if that is the case, and it is the case, then it also denotes that Jesus came from heaven, which is their sticking point, that he was God and confirmed it. And that's why you have his death, burial, and resurrection. And the Pharisees still struggling with that, but now they're seeing it in and through his followers, his disciples. The same power, same authority that he had given them, and that you're seeing that the same fruit of those things. And they had seen it through the apostles. Well, they were disciples at the time, yes. but the the seventy who went out exactly, and they were able to do get um, Jesus gave them power to cast out devils and to lay hands on the sick and things of that nature. So they had seen it before, but we'll see as we read the next section that they figured, 
once the the leader of the movement died, it would be exactly. over. But now they're still seeing it, and they don't understand that. But the blinding has come from the God of this world Amen. on their eyes so that they are not able to understand and perceive because their hearts were not willing to accept Jesus. Exactly. And I, I mentioned earlier that they would have been satisfied with people being healed through any other name, even if it was a demon, right? Didn't they call Jesus a devil? And didn't they say he was casting out demons by demons? They were satisfied with that answer. But by the not, king of the demons. <laughs> right, but they weren't satisfied with him doing it because God said that he can Right, because he's God and he's the Messiah. So, a lot of there's a lot there. Lots of a lot of Holy Spirit to minister to you, but the the key thing is just out of love for the Lord that we are obedient to Him and His leading by and through His Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 That is how we enter in. That is how we receive. That is how we enter into his rest. And the blood makes us righteous again. We so have we to can do that. Stay amen. on that truth. The blood makes us righteous. And our obedience is our yes and amen. We agree with you. And it's our loving service to the Father. Amen. Okay. So we're going to pause there for today. And with that, can I get a volunteer to close out in prayer, please? I will. All right, Layla. Lord, we just thank you for today, and we thank you for your blood that covers us, Lord, that makes us clean and white as snow, Lord. We thank you that we are the righteousness in you, Jesus, that we have a right standing with the Father because of the work that you completed 2,000 years ago, Lord, upon the cross. And we thank you for our listeners and our partners, Lord, that you're blessing them, Lord, that you're mm -hmm. causing them to excel, Lord, that you are causing them to see you more and more each day lord and we thank you for those you're bringing into the kingdom lord those brothers and sisters and souls that you are harvesting god we thank you and we declare freedom in the name of jesus to those that need it and we thank you for who you are lord mm -hmm. in jesus name amen in jesus mighty amen. name amen and amen well we love you god bless you and have a wonderful day we hope you've enjoyed listening to a day of prayers morning bible study this year, Pastor John and I are believing for 1,000 new partners to believe God with us and join in the work of the ministry. God is doing great things through a day of prayer, and we want you to be a part. If the Lord has placed on your heart to partner with us, please contact us online at adayofprayer.org. Click on the menu and select Partner. Complete the form, and we'd love to hear from you. Thank you again. God bless you. Have a wonderful day. Thank you for listening to A Day of Prayer. We trust the Lord that you are strengthened and encouraged in your relationship with Christ. Visit us on our website, adayofprayer.org, where you can check out our blog, find additional study resources, or shop the official A Day of Prayer store. Remember, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. So until next time, Take care and God bless you.